What is going on guys? Welcome to Zoroth Games and today I have a build video for you guys on the Elder Scrolls Online. What? Zoroth does build videos? Yes I do. And this is the Annihilator Templar. Your goal is to annihilate everything. So obviously, if the name isn't self-explanatory, you are a pure blood DPS here to absolutely wreck everything. Now, um, I have this set up to where it's usable from VR1 just all the way to VR14. Um, I used it, you know, I've been using the same setup the entire time since I hit VR1. And uh, it's just, it's been destroying, guys. Um, obviously, I've made some alterations and things. It's not been the exact same straight from the get-go, but very, very similar. Um, so, this video is going to be a little bit longer than my usual videos simply because it's a build video. There's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, so, I hope you guys are ready for this. Let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, guys, so first up, we're going to go over our skills. Um, now, the skills for this build are pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's simple to learn, hard to master. You just have to know when and how to do everything, how to do it at the right time, that kind of thing. Um, so, our first bar right here, here we're running Double Destruction Staff. Um, Consists primarily of Dawn's Wrath. Um, take a look at our first ability. We have Radiant Oppression. Um, make sure you morph it to Radiant Oppression. I forget what the original name was, but the reason you want to morph it is because you can see right there it says deals up to 40% additional damage in proportion to your current Magicka. That is fantastic. We want to do as much magic damage as we can and then below that we have low health targets take up to 300 percent additional damage that is where radiant oppression absolutely shines and you can just wreck just absolutely destroy um so get that morph get that move on your bar um, next we have up inner light um, now this is a mages guild um ability and you want to get the inner light morph because it increases your max magicka by 5%, which is huge. Especially, you know, when your max magicka is, you know, if you have like 15,000 max magicka or something, 5% more of that is going to be a lot. So you want to have 5% extra magicka. So if you haven't used this move yet or whatever, put it on your ability bar, level it up as fast as you can, and get the inner light morph. It is imperative that you get this especially the morph because if you don't have the morph it actually reduces your max magicka by 15 per for by five percent excuse me and you do not want that at all so make sure you get this morph guys it's very important next up on our bar this really depends on your situation breath of life this is a healing move obviously um, so the reason I have this on here is because when you're running through leveling up in your veteran ranks, you're going to need a self heal. You're not going to have somebody there to heal you, um, to watch your back all the time. You may, if you're playing with friends, but, uh, you know, if I, I, I usually play most of the time by myself in my veteran ranks because most of my friends aren't there yet. Um, so when you're playing solo breath of life, you want to get this move and morph it to breath of life. Um, if you can, if, you know, if you need to um, spare some skill points, um, spend them on some of the passive abilities for uh, Dawn's Wrath or any of the skill trees per se for the class, um, then by all means, don't morph it. But I had the points to morph it, so I morphed it to Breath of Life, so get that. However, this is a DPS build. So when you're in a dungeon or you have a friend questing with you or whatever and you want to do max damage, get purifying light uh, I know the original move was backlash um, I again you don't have to get this morph but um, you know it the morph heals enemy or allies in the era area so I was like well might as well get that morph it won't hurt to have a little extra healing in the group I guess but 
The reason this move is so amazing is because it summons an expanding beam of pure sunlight to doom an enemy, storing all damage taken for 6 seconds and releasing it with a 33% increase. Like, that is huge. You can do a lot of damage in 6 seconds. And then releasing all of it for a 33% increase, that is absolutely massive. You have to have this on your bar in a group content scenario. I mean, you know, you have to because you will burn everything down so, 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 so fast. You have to have this. On to the next move. Um, so this one is really up to you. I have Vampire's Bane uh, simply because I like to have the DOT on there. Um, damage over time for those of you that don't know. Um, you may see down there upon activation you gain major proficiency increasing your spell critical rating by 1621 that varies depending on level or and your gear I believe so um, that actually when you have inner light on doesn't increase it anymore because you already have major proficiency on with inner light so casting this doesn't give you that extra uh, critical rating unfortunately However, it does do uh, extra damage over time. That is why I got the Vampire's Bane morph to do that. You could morph it to the other one for an a for your AOE bar, but I like using Vampire's Bane for a DOT because damage over time is important. It's nice to have there, so I have that. Optionally, you could change that out to something else. Um, under Age of Spear, you can use Punching Sweeps. But again, this is a ranged kind of build. You don't want to get in close too much, but, uh, you know... It, you can you can kind of get in and out pretty fast. Then you've got piercing javelin. Any of these moves work quite nicely. Um, uh, you know you don't want to go in with focus charge. Um, you don't want to dash people. Blazing spear. That's another good one. Um, but we'll get to that move here in a second. Um, and then our last move on our bar, um, solar flare. Um, this move is gonna be your bread and butter. It's gonna be one of the main moves you're casting. Uh, for single target damage, it is unbelievably powerful. Um, and again, um, it, it's a 1.1 second channel. So you throw out a couple of these with your purifying light up, and then that blows up for a 33% increase. That's going to drain their health a whole lot, and I will show you that really soon. Um, and then next up for our supercharge, I have the soul assault move under the, uh, what's it called? soul magic bar uh, I morphed it to this get to get an extra second of channeling so that it does more magic damage uh, magic damage is really where this shines and I will get into that with champion points um, so yeah you can really optionally you could swap this out for something else but this is a single target bar so I really want to do heavy single target damage and this is one of the better single target damage superchargers so that's what I went with. Now we'll go on to our AOE bar. Um, so first up we have Repentance. Um, now, I, I went with the Repentance morph. I actually probably suggest going with the other one. The only uh, time Repentance comes in handy is if your healer, um, for some reason, doesn't get to you. And you've got a bunch of dead bodies, just pop that, you'll get a lot of health back. It doesn't restore... Um, Magicka, unfortunately, but the whole point of having this move on the bar at all is because you read here um, While slotted you gain minor fortitude minor endurance and minor intellect increasing health stamina and magic recovery by 10% Which is absolutely Amazing when you're doing aoe damage and you're just pumping out you're spamming the bar over and over and over and over You need that extra 10% recovery, especially if you're not playing a magicka based race like I'm playing a high elf so I have a lot of magic recovery but this 10% is vital 10% is a lot so having this on your bar is very very important next up we have inner light so that when we weapon swap it stays on at all times and we don't have to uh, you know reactivate it which is really nice then we have blazing spear you want to take this morph uh, because it stuns an enemy, which is really nice to uh, keep them off, and you can also focus on that enemy. Uh, it's really kind of difficult to uh, pick out which enemy actually gets stunned. I believe it's the one that's closest to the spear. Um, that's At least that's from my experience, what I have seen. But it just 
sometimes it's random it doesn't really uh, it's not really consistent but having blazing spear on there is very important that's a really good AoE damage uh, builder that's a great way to start out AoE damage so have that on there for sure next up we have flame pulsar um, this is under our destruction staff uh, obviously depending on what kind of staff you're using it could be electric pulsar or frost pulsar whatever um, I think the original move is called impulse you want to take the pulsar morph because it reduces the uh, enemy's max health by 10% for 32 seconds which is really really nice uh, because that's 10% less health that they have so um, even if you're fighting a single target enemy like a boss I, I'd run in there real quick pop an impulse and then bar swap and start doing single target damage because this is really really nice to have because um, even when you bar swap uh, that's a debuff on them so when you bar swap it doesn't remove the debuff so that's really nice to have that 10% redu reduced health so definitely get that last on here um, again for when I'm leveling up I have charging maneuver um, uh, it probably would be a better to take the other more for whatever again this is this is really just for whatever if you're in a dungeon um, again you could take the other morph for um, whatever this move was originally called um, vampires Bane you know so you can shoot up to three targets um, otherwise you could do uh, puncturing sweeps uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, AOE damage as far as the uh, Templar class goes. Um, there is a more for Solar Flare, Solar Barrage, but you do not want to take that. Uh, that just mimics what Pulsar does. Do not take that morph. If anything, take Dark Flare. Um, as a matter of fact, if you do have the point, take Dark Flare. That's really important for PvP, and it's really helpful for PvE as well, but uh, you definitely want that. Take the Dark Flare uh, morph. Um, and then for your supercharge, you you want to use Nova, really. Um, I have Werewolf on there just because uh, I've leveled it up quite a bit, and it's really powerful. Um, but if you want to do a, just a lot of AoE damage just on the spot, do Nova. And uh, take the uh, Solar Prison Morph, I suggest, because it, uh, it allows your allies to activate a more powerful synergy. It does more damage, uh, and that is your goal, to do as much damage as possible. You could snare enemies, um, and that's really nice, but... You, again, this is the Annihilator Templar. Do as much damage as possible. So, take Solar Prison with this one. Um, again, I have Werewolf on there just because I like it. But, uh, Nova is one of your, is a really good option. And, uh, that is it for our skills, guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Gear, and I will see you there. <laughs> Okay guys, so here we are at gear, and um, this is actually uh, really interesting the way I have it set up. Uh, let me first say that if you haven't done any clothing, uh, this build is going to be really, really hard to pull off. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of magicka, you're not going to have uh, your spell damage, magicka regeneration, reduce magicka cause, that kind of thing. So if you haven't done any clothing up to this point, start doing clothing. I highly suggest it. Just... Yeah, find a way to power level it. Whatever you have to do, do clothing. Also, uh, additionally, I would suggest doing woodworking uh, and enchanting. Uh, don't do too many professions on one character. Three is really too much already. But uh, uh, two at that most, really. But three, you know, that's that's fine. Um, you just really want to conserve your skill points early on. But because uh, you want to be able to make your staffs and um, your uh, armor. But... Again, that comes down to personal preference, but clothing is super, super, super important for this build. Um, so, with that said, let's go ahead and go into the gear that I have crafted. So, uh, these have Deathwind set. That's not important. The set you really want is uh, Magnus, um, because you can see it adds uh, Maximum Magicka, Magicka re Recovery, and Spell Damage. Unfortunately, I don't have the fourth piece in the set. That is uh, one of my big goals. I need to get that fourth piece. Um, so research as much as you can. I didn't properly research leveling up. So, uh, I'm, you know, again, unfortunately, I'm trying to level that up at my own pace. But um, I will get there, and you do want to get that fourth item. Uh, the fifth item is pretty nice. You might be able to pull off an, a two-piece set or something that's better. 
Uh, in fact, there probably is a better two-piece, uh, especially drops like Worm Cult, for example. That's really uh, that's a really nice two-piece set. Um, but you just have to go with what you've got. Um, if you can only craft like two pieces of Magnus, craft two pieces of Magnus. I ran that f all the way through VR1. Uh, this build still worked. It's just you know the more pieces the better. Uh, and again, I have my shoulders on here. Um, and then I believe I have the shoes from Magnus. That's right. And then the other sets I have on here are just because I had the traits and I didn't want to just craft uh, another armor that was just basic. I was like, well, I can make a two-piece here and a uh, two-piece there or whatever. So uh, I put on Torx Pack here for my spell damage. Um, I have that on the legs. And interestingly enough, I put Torx Pack on both of my staves. So whenever I weapon swap, I'm going to have Torx Pack active at all time. Wow, which the two piece for that is spell damage, which is really, really good. The other stuff, not too important. Um, so that's why the two piece for Torx Pact is really, really nice. Um, uh, then I have Death Deathwind on here, which isn't really magic based. Uh, however, the physical resistance and health doesn't hurt. Um, again, this is just because I had the slots um, later on in the build. Once this hits VR 14, that kind of thing, you'll see a huge change in this. Uh, not necessarily the same for the skills. Uh, I think the the single target bar uh, may vary just a little bit. But I actually don't see that one changing at all. Maybe the AOE bar will. Um, but anyway, yeah, the gear will definitely change quite a bit um, by then. You'll probably see Magnus on there for sure, uh, but we'll find out uh, then. And um, when you have your gear, I suggest uh, enchanting it. Uh, the head, chest, and legs with health. Um, because those are your three big pieces of armor that give you a lot of um, enchantingness. Um, as you can see, it gives you 462, 526, that kind of thing. Whereas the shoulders, waist, that kind of thing, only give you 188, that kind of thing. So uh, with your head, chest, and legs, health, everything else, magicka. Um, with your necklace, make sure that it is giving you maximum health. And with your two rings, maximum magicka. Um, as you can see, I was lucky enough to get Magicka Recovery and Reduce Magicka Cost, so those are nice um, having that. But yeah, that is pretty much the basic setup for the build. Again, Double Destruction Staff. It doesn't really matter if you're using Flame uh, or Electric or Frost, whatever. I just like the Flame Staff the best. And so that's what I'm using here. Um, and that is it for the um, gear, guys. Um, uh, let's go ahead and head over to the Champion Points. I'll see you there. Okay guys, here we are at the champion points, and uh, obviously at your lower veteran ranks you're not going to have that many. Like myself, I don't have, I probably have like 15 or so, but every single point is very important. Um, and I'll show you the best places uh, to put those, so yeah. Um, I actually have a thief point available right now. Um, where I've been putting my thief points into is increasing my max magic co recovery, which is really uh, a good thing to go with my high elf racials because I have really good magic recovery as a high elf, plus my light armor passives, plus my uh, armor sets. So this is really nice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a point, another point to that. But at the same time, you want to put a couple points into magician because reducing the magic cost of spells really important to you want to reduce your spell cost as much as possible um, but also magicka regeneration is important so those are the two I suggest putting your points into early on uh, once I get a higher level with these and more champion points I'll show you where else you can put points into and yeah uh, but let's go ahead and go over to the warrior I've really only been putting everything in the light armor focus simply because with light armor you're pretty squishy you're gonna get hurt a lot so, wearing five or more pieces of armor, uh, mine's currently increased by 3%, which is really nice. 3% uh, is, a, you know, quite a bit for increasing your um, effectiveness of wearing it. So, definitely put points in there. Other than that, there wasn't really much over here you, you could do. Um, you could put some points into uh, resistant. That's really nice. Um... But again, it just stick this 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 tree right here is really preference. I, I prefer the light armor passives quite a bit. 
Um, absorbing damage is nice, but again, you're a da you're a uh, DPS. You just you're pure damage. You're not worried too much about actually taking the damage. You're going to take damage, obviously, but uh, again, uh, your main focus is to actually do damage. Uh, and then over here we have the mage tree. Uh, uh, we have good old Thermoturge. I've really probably said that wrong, so don't hate, but there you go. Um, this is, again, where your magic damage shines. That supercharged soul assault, uh, this just even further increases it. Put a lot of points into this as you level it up. And then uh, the only other place you really need to put it in is uh, put points into a staff expert. Uh, that's a really nice place because the more damage you can do with your base weapon, well, the better. Um, also, doing heavy attacks with your weapon gives you magic back, so that's nice. Uh, not really much you can put into this tree, um, uh, other than Elfborn. Elfborn is a really, really nice one. I haven't put any points into that yet, but uh, increasing damage done by spell criticals that is really important. You definitely want that um, because your spell critical rating is also very important. Which, speaking of uh, spell critical here's spell precision again you need apprentice rank 30 so this is going to come with quite a bit more champion points uh you might see that again you'll see this change you know by veteran rank 14 which i will update you guys on by then so yeah that is the champion points and uh next i'll just show you show you how the combat works with this build and uh we'll go from there <laughs> So uh, here I am at a uh, camp uh, in my VR3 zone for the Aldmeri Dominion and looks like somebody came through here and killed some of these guys. Okay, so first what I want to show you is the AoE build and how I start that out. Um, so I've got a group of two here, so, you know, that's decent, you know, a group of three, whatever you're going to do. I always, always, always start out with this right here. And always make sure you have on inner light. Um, you want to have on inner light at all times because spell critical rating is amazing. And I'll show you that after combat. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to throw my spear. I'm going to jump in and just spam pulsar. Boom, boom, boom. Roll out, get close to him again. Pulsar, pulsar, per pulsar. It just melts them. Just melts them down. If your health gets low, swap over, do a quick kill. Again, that's for uh, solo play. If you're not playing solo, then your healer should take care of you. But if you are, bar swap really quick and get that health back. That's the really. That's all you do on your AOE bar. You just throw a spear. Make sure spear is up at all time. As soon as you see it disappear, throw it again. Um, you know, because an ally might pick it up for that stamina and whatnot. And so, yeah. Let's go ahead and swap over to our single target bar. Because, again, the uh, AOE bar is really simple. Our first move is simply for the Magicka regeneration. And, again, you could use Repentance uh, for the corpses getting health back. But, I, again, I suggest taking the other one. Our second move is Inner Light. So all we've got really got to use is the spear and pulsar, and then our last move is optional for you. You could use uh, this, um, what's it called? Puncturing sweep, whatever you want to use there. But yeah, let's go ahead and put our backlash on here, or purifying light is what we have it morphed to, and I'll show you guys how that works. Um, now this is gonna melt this guy really fast, but you're gonna start out. Um, say you're fighting a boss or whatever. Um, you're gonna go boom. All right, shoot up a couple of dark flares. All right, and that move didn't even—he didn't even have six seconds for it to blow up. Um, you want to have your DOT up again, so um, you know. Here, let's try try this out. Let's go DOT. Go boom. Let's just pop off a couple dark flares. And see what happens. See, that kills him. It doesn't even have time to blow up. That's how powerful this build is, guys. With your spell critical and your spell damage, it's just, it's going to be insane by veteran rank 14. So, let me see if I can find an enemy that's more powerful. Uh, 
and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I... Oh, wow. Okay, so this guy started attacking the boss. Uh, either way, you'll see what my damage is compared to his. Um, he's not doing a whole lot. So, uh, he's got his attention. We're going to start off with a DOT. Go boom. Backlash. Okay. Solar flare. Solar flare. Solar flare. Watch this when it goes off. Look at that damage. Okay, he's got a supercharge up, so you're going to notice. Look at my Magicka. Look how hard this is to run out of Magicka. This is really impressive, guys. Okay, look at his health. Boom, radiant oppression. Melt him. He's done. When his health is around 25%, 25 to 30-ish percentage, that's when I find it to be really good. Radiant oppression just melts him. Obviously, we had help there. Trust me, it's totally different trying to solo this guy. He just he chases you. You have to dodge roll a lot. He's a hard boss to fight by yourself, but that was really good uh, to give you an example of how much damage I can do with this build. It's really good. Um, get all that stuff. I've already beaten this boss, but um, and let me just show you the character page to finish this off. Uh, we've got 1800 Magicka, which is really nice for a VR3. Uh, maximum health, 1400. Not too shabby. Spell damage, uh, 1004. Again, not too shabby for a VR3. Spell critical, 48%. Uh, we really want that to be in the 50% range, but 48%, honestly, a VR3 is really not that bad. Um, spell resistance, uh, um, physical resistance, you know, whatever, and weapon critical, weapon damage, not too important. Magic recovery, 909, not too bad. Um, actually, pretty decent, uh, considering, all things considered, actually, you know, with our light armor, uh, our high elf, and racial passives and our champion points and what those are going into so 909 not too bad and uh, yeah that's our character sheet guys and that was the build and that was the annihilator vr1 to 3 kind of thing um just be on the lookout for this when it hits vr14 guys because it's gonna be amazing it's going to absolutely wreck i'm gonna have a full gear set so i'm gonna have everything ready and this guy is gonna be this build is gonna be one of the better ones in the game honestly i mean it's just i mean the the dps in combos unbelievable you just have to have you know a, a healer you have to have those people that you have to have in a group you know you can't go in without a healer because then i have to have a healing move and that's just not good because i'm a dps not a healer that kind of thing you guys get the idea this but the annihilator templar so be ready people it's coming. It's going to be amazing. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, uh, be sure to subscribe um, for more ESO and more build videos. Again, uh, like I said, I'm going to update you on this Templar build once it's VR14, that kind of thing. Uh, it'll probably be a while. I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff, different characters. Uh, so, yeah, that, speaking of what you just be on the lookout again for uh, other build videos. You never know what might come up. Um, I might do some leveling builds and, you know. 1 to 10, 10 to 25, that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, um, next up we'll see what I'm focusing on. I might do Dragon Knight, I might do Nightblade. just depends, uh, especially when they announce uh, the racials and what those will be, f the new updated racials for the other races, because, I mean, if, if the Khajiit gets a stamina passive, uh, you best believe I'm going to be playing a Khajiit Nightblade. Um, you know, we'll see, guys. We'll see. But, uh, again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.